Hello everyone, today I've got some exciting news from the Docker world. Docker Bake is now generally available in Docker Desktop 4.38, which was just released on February 5th, 2025. And if you haven't heard of Docker Bake yet, think of it as Docker Compose, but it's for building images, not running containers. It's a powerful build orchestration tool that takes the hassle out of managing complex Docker builds. So no more juggling multiple Docker build commands with endless flags. Bake lets you unify all of your build settings, your targets, and your arguments in one place. That means simpler, faster, and less error-prone image builds for projects of any size. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through a few things. One, what Docker Bake is and why it's useful. Two, how to write a bake file in YAML, not HCL, to simplify builds. And three, some advanced features like multiple targets and matrix builds. And last, number four, not least, we're gonna do Docker bake and how to use it in a very simple CI CD pipeline. I'll also explain briefly how Docker bake differs from Docker compose, when you should use one over the other and how they can work together in your development workflow. So by the end, you're gonna see how Docker Bake can simplify complex build processes and save you a ton of time. If you want more of our deep dives into various aspects of DevOps, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and we'll keep it coming. I'm Michael Forrester for CodeCloud. Let's dive into Docker Bake. So before we dive into examples, I just wanna clarify a few things. This is a Docker Compose file. I'm gonna minimize my screen here so that we can see this easily. So this is a Docker Compose file. And I guess the thing I wanna highlight is that this is used to run services, right? Docker Compose is primarily about how multiple containers work together and it manages networking volumes, environment variables, and it's focused on runtime. That's really what this is for. Docker Bake, and I'm gonna open up the, our little sample file here. The Docker, this Docker Bake YAML, the idea here is that Docker Bake is specific about building images container images in particular. So it's gonna standardize the image process, handle build arguments, tags in different contexts, and it's, gonna, it's focused on creating optimized images. That's what it's focused on. So Compose is about running those images, for, especially for local development environments. Bake is all about taking those images and like building them. That's what it does. And so in many projects, you're actually gonna use both. You're gonna use Docker Bake and Docker Compose so we're going to explore just Docker Bake, but there is a Compose file here. I just wanted you to make sure. So let's talk about basic usage. So first, let's talk about writing just a basic Docker Compose YAML file. So I'm going to open up our simple directory here, and I'm going to open up this very simple Docker Bake file. Now, notice that we've already got a very simple Flask app here inside this file. And I'm going to close these just for simplicity. So we've already got a, a, a compose file here that has a very simple Flask app. And then we've got a basic Docker file. Notice it's just very simple using 3.9, no real, like nothing fancy. Notice it's exposing 5,000. Notice our app, by the way, is listening on 5,000. And we've got a simple requirements.txt, which is just Flask in this particular case. And normally what we would do is that we would CD into this simple directory. I'm going to blow this up so that we can see it full screen. I would CD into this simple directory and I just do a docker build dash T and I would do my app colon latest. And if you're familiar, this is just going to go through the build process and build an image called my app. And the tag is going to be latest I'm missing a period here, right? So this is going to look in this directory for a Docker file and it's going to build that file. This example is the simplest I'm gonna show you because I want you to see simple examples because Docker Bake actually excels in complexity, but I'm starting simple just to make sure that we can, you know, make it palatable. Now, if we go and switch over to our Docker Bake file, what's interesting here is that you'll see that it's just got a service called my app and here's the build context, which is this directory, the directory that the file is in, right? and that the Docker file is called a Docker file, doesn't have any fancy name, and the image is gonna be my app latest. So, so everything that we were going to type onto the command line, we're not doing anymore. Now, as you can see, it's like, well, Michael, that's not super complex. Does that really matter? Well, we're doing a simple example, right? 
All right, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go back here and we're actually gonna run a very simple Docker bake command. So this is gonna be Docker, uh, actually it's build X, bake. And you might say, well, Michael, what is build X? Well, that's as part of build kit, which has been used to kind of build Docker for a while. But if you wanna get to the bake command, this is what you type. Now I'm gonna add one extra, extra piece is that by default, the file, it's in HashiCorp language, it's actually not in YAML. And so what we're doing here is we're actually specifying the file because without it, it just won't work. It won't find the file. And so here we are loading it up. You'll notice it's pulling you know, the Python 3.9 slim. It's running through the entire build file, expecting layers, and it actually basically created my app colon latest. So it automatically builds the image. And so we just replace that relatively long command with a simple version controlled file, right? And so we've actually built our app and it's actually now basically set up, right? So if we do a Docker, if we do a Docker image LS, what we'll see is that we'll see that my app is there with the latest. We also have Elasticsearch and a web UI for something that we were messing with a long time ago. Uh, but notice that the my app latest is actually listed there. So that was just a simple example. What if we switch to something a little bit more advanced? So let's go to advanced and see if we can do something a little more sophisticated. But before we do that, let's take a look at the files that we're dealing with. So, because Docker Bake really shines when you have multiple images or different build variations. So let's say you have a front end, a back end, and a database, and you want to build them all at once instead of running three separate Docker build commands. Well, we can define all that, right? We can define all that in Docker Bake. So let's go take a look. So before I do any of this, just note that there's a front end, a back end, and a database all right here. So let's take these one at a time. So let's do the database first. So there's a Docker fill, <laughs> sorry, there's a Docker file. And notice that we're pulling Postgres, we're pulling an Alpine version. Here's the standard pieces. I know you're gonna be like, Michael, those are horrible passwords. I know it's just, it's just for, for show. So that's a Docker file for that. And notice there's some SQL here in order to kind of like set up the demo. And then there's a backend. Backend has an app bot P, you know, PY that basically connects to the database and you know selects a message. Here's the Docker file. Notice the working dir for this is an app. It's just gonna copy what's in there. It's exposing 8080 and this is just a standard run. Nothing fancy, but there's a Docker file. So there's a Docker file in the database. There's a Docker file in the back end. Let's go take a look at the front end. So we've got a little bit of source here. So we've got an app TSX, right? We've got a Docker file. We've got a package.json and notice in the root directory, we've got a Docker bake YAML. So if we click on this Docker file, this is using Node, basically copying, doing an NPN install, making some directories, doing index.html, you know, and basically then using Nginx to kind of like share that out, right? So at the end of the day, this is just going to run Nginx with some, basically some HTML in front of it. So let's take a look at our Docker bake file. So Docker bake file is basically specifying what pieces that we want here. So we got front end, back end, database. We've got the build, the context, and the Docker file. So we seem like we should be good to go. So let's go see if we can Docker bake this whole thing. So if I, again, once again, if I do Docker, build X, bake, and I'm gonna specify the file because again, natively it's HCL, but we're specifying a YAML file. So let's see what happens. Ooh, looks like a lot of stuff here. But I can definitely see it working through my app. There's the database. There's the back end. Let's see, do we see anything else? Nope, still building, still thinking about it. A couple of compatibility warnings, that's okay. I think this is a relatively old application. One morning was found for some, you know, sensitive environmental passwords, but that's okay. And then notice that front end is here as well. So I've got the back end built here. I've got the database built here and I've got the front end built here. So we're looking pretty good. So that built out with one little warning from a security perspective, and that was all done in a single command simply because I had Docker bake refer to the Docker files in each of the different directories. So no issues at all, right? Pretty straightforward. But this is something where it really, really excels. 
Okay. So this is a great example of a multi-service setup. And so when we run Docker, build X bake, that's what's going to happen. Now let's switch gears a little bit out of this advanced scenario and let's go to an environmental scenario. So I'm going to clear this out. And let's take a look at what's happening here. So not CI CD, but environments. So we've got an index.js. We got a package.json and we've got a Docker file that builds. And look at this. There's some interesting stuff going on here where basically we've defined a production environment. We could actually do this for multiple environments, production, QA, development. So let's go see what our Docker file says here. So we now have one that is for development tag and another one that's for production, but notice it's the same Docker file in the same context. Context hasn't changed. So you could take one Docker file, add some context and some changes and actually deploy that in multiple environmental builds. So once again, this is kind of a different dimension. And so if I bring this up full and just do a quick Docker build X bake. Once again, I can look and I can see that it's built Oops, <laughs> it's built the wrong thing. Let's, let's, let's change environments and try that again. How about that? How about that? <laughs> okay, here we go. All right. So notice here, which is the proper output. We now basically have run if development equals production, then do this. But if production equals production, then do this. So notice it's, you can see it's doing development and production, but there's conditionals in here that says, look, if it's production, then we're going to add more security. If it's development, then we're not going to do that. And so notice that we've got two labels here of myapp.prod and myapp.dev basically is tag. So we have a dev tag and a prod tag now for our myapp image. Okay. So then let's talk about CI CD integration. So if we switch gears yet again, and we look just at a straight up CI CD integration, we now have something a little different. And this one I'm going to hold off on committing per se, because what build server are we going to use and what is this going to look like? But notice here that we've got targets of API dev, prod, web dev, and web prod. And we are now running it across a whole slew of different contexts. And not only that, we're doing it for different platforms. So notice that this says dev, prod, dev, prod, and we've got a base target that defines some shared configurations. And notice that I'm running this for two platforms, x86 and ARM base platforms. And notice that for API base for development, I'm doing something for different for development as I am for prod. And notice this all would actually run inside of GitHub actions. So this is an example Docker bake file to show what you could do if you wanted to integrate prod in development or prod staging in development or whatever your environments were, and you wanted to do it for multiple targets. So this is you an example of the kinds of things that you could do if you're going to integrate it with CI CD. So that gives you an idea of what's possible with Docker bake. And I hope that you will take this repository and play with it, put your hands on it and do whatever you can to explore Docker bake, to improve the delivery of your builds. One other thing though, before we go, is I just want to restate is that Docker Bake and Docker Compose work very well together in this scenario. So I'll talk about that in depth just a little bit more, but remember, you're going to use both tools when you actually spin up environments. All right. So before we wrap up, let's recap what we've covered. First, Docker Bake makes building Docker images easier and faster. Second, you can define multiple builds in a single YAML file. Third, it does support matrix type builds, multiple environments, and it integrates with CI CD. Four, it complements Docker Compose in a full development workflow. And so let's take a moment to remember the key differences between Docker Bake and Docker Compose. So if we're talking about Docker Bake, we're going to be focused on building images. If we're talking about Compose, we're going to be focused on running containers. Bake handles build arguments, tags, and platforms where Compose is going to manage networks, volumes, and environment variables. Bake is great for CI, CD, and standardizing builds, 
whereas Compose is gonna be perfect for local development environments. Bake is gonna excel at matrix builds for multiple configurations, while Compose is gonna do great at defining service relationships. And so if you're just getting started, don't worry, you don't need to use all these features at once. Just start with a simple bake file and build up from there. And the real power of Docker Bake really comes when your project grows in complexity. So we're gonna use simple, but complex is where it really has value. And so instead of managing multiple build scripts or complicated command chains, you've got everything defined in one readable version controlled file. So for most professional projects, I'll recommend using both tools together. Bake for your build process, compose for your runtime configuration. This gives you a standardized way to build images and a flexible way to run them during development. So now it's your turn. Try Docker Bake today, update to Docker Desktop 4.3a and create a Docker Bake YAML and watch the magic happen. And again, if you found this tutorial helpful, smash that like button, subscribe for more Docker and DevOps tutorials. And if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. And until next time, happy baking with Docker.